worthy to be worshipped. You're so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, bless your name. We come to magnify the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We come to magnify his name. Hallelujah. 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 Welcome to Destiny Christian Center, where we are illuminating the pathway to purpose through the teaching of God's word. Stand to your feet and give God glory this morning. Stand to your feet and give God the praise. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's do that. You make me happy. Hallelujah. Let's do that just a little bit. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And I just want to saturate the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Day before, oh glory. 
Sometimes you gotta just be in a place where it's more than just a. Because I don't know about you, but I already made a declaration in my own heart that I'm gonna give God the glory. I'm gonna give God the praise. Whether anybody does it with me or not, I'm gonna give God glory. Whether anybody shouts with me or not, I'm gonna give Him the praise. Because God is worthy. God is worthy. God is worthy. Hallelujah. 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 Now you all are going to have to be excited today. I'm here to tell you, you're going to have to be excited today. I'm going to say it just one more time. Y'all going to have to be excited today. You can't just give them that little. Because God has got us here. He's given us the ability to lift our hands. He's given us our voice to give him the glory. And that's just what we're going to do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I already told myself Dr. Poole is not here and I am not going to act up. I'm going to stick with the script. Although I want to go flying somewhere else right now. But I'm going to just roost right here and we're going to give him glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead and take your seats in the presence of our life-changing king. Thank you. So much for being here. We give God glory, praise, and honor here at Destiny Christian Center. I'm here in Dr. Poole's absence. I truly do miss the man of God. I told him, see, next time you go out of town, you're going to have to tell them you're only going to be gone for three days. I'm going to put him on a three-day travel limit when he's gone without me, oh, glory to God. But he sends his greetings. He sends his love. And if I'm thinking 10, 11, 12, 1, he's probably just finished preaching and We just thank the Lord for him. I appreciate my husband. I appreciate the unfailing love that he has for me, that he has for our family. Not like God, amen. But I tell you what, I'm just grateful, grateful, grateful for my husband and for our pastor. Amen. To God be the glory. Welcome, 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 Hannah Fellowship. We greet you with the love of the Lord. Hallelujah. You all came out today, and we are so blessed to have you here. We're so excited that God has given us a means by which we can get people in the house. They in the house. Hallelujah, and here it is. So welcome, 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 and welcome again. And we know that you are going to be blessed. Amen. Next Sunday, we will have the Joneses Fellowship on tap. Oh, glory to God. And we're going to be excited then as well. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Well, on this Saturday, should the Lord say the same, September 26th, we are going to have a Women with a Purpose meeting at noon. God has given me a word of exhortation, edification, and comfort to minister God's life, light, and love to his daughters. And I'm excited. Hey, Tifa, you look cute under that mask. I see you. (laughs) Hallelujah. So we're going to have such a wonderful, wonderful time, and I'm really excited for it. If you need child care, please text 702-602-0777 so that we can make our accommodations for that. We won't eat as usual. We won't have all the fluff as usual, but God has a word. Silver and gold, I have none, but in the name of Jesus, I do have a word, and God is going to bless us. Amen. To God be the glory. We have our free medical clinic at Simply Uncaged coming up on October the 3rd, and we are looking forward to that being a blessing in the community from 9 to 2.30, registration 9 to 12, and uh, please avail yourself, if not, if for nothing else, just to go, to be there, to pray with them, and to believe God that souls will be saved and added to the kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. October 25th is uh, just almost a month away, and that is our Super Sunday Impact Giving Service. And I'm telling you what, I'm more excited this year than I have been in the previous years because the devil thought he had us. Oh, glory to God. But he, God has sure made a way. So I have an expectation for signs, wonders, and miracles. Our Super Sunday Impact Service. Well, what is that? For those of you who don't know, for the past, I believe, seven years or so, we've had a phenomenal time of, of grace giving where we have asked the Lord, asked the people as the Lord prompts them and encourages them to give above and beyond their tithes and offerings. And for the past few years, we've received as much as almost $100,000 in that service and as little as I think maybe 40 or 50. But whatever it is, God has been good to us and the money, the funds have come in to build the kingdom. Hallelujah. You see the dollars at work, new carpet, new bathrooms. Oh, glory to God. I don't know if anybody's excited about them bathrooms as I am. 
Hallelujah. So we've got a new classroom. We're still getting new flooring. We have So God is beautiful, beautifying our place, not to mention the things that we are expecting him to do. So don't wait. I know, again, this has been a crazy, crazy year, but I'm ready. I've been saving since the first of the year, and I trust that you all have been, have been too, that we're, gonna, we're going to give God the glory and raise the praise and receive in excess above our tithe and offering, amen, from that time of giving on October 25th. 2020. Amen. To God be the glory. Continue to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, our website. Amen. And to God be the glory. Our app is coming right along and Android users. I'm telling you, your, your day is coming. It's just a few short days away. So stand by and we will have our Destiny Christian Center app available for iPhone users and Android users as well. To God be the glory. You know, we have our noonday Bible study. We have Wednesday Bible study. So many things. Date night with the pools, intercessory prayer of which yesterday we had a tremendous time in the Lord being encouraged and strengthened and reminded it's not personal it's just warfare it's not personal it's just warfare so don't think that the devil is just picking on you don't think your neighbor is just picking on you. oh y'all gonna be quiet in church today is that what it's gonna be like hallelujah it's not personal it is warfare and he's given us the tools to fight we just have to put them in place and in practice amen to God be the glory. If you're in the house, turn your device down. If you're not here, turn it up. Oh, glory to God as we are expecting the Lord to move on our behalf. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Well, our words of encouragement for today. Our words are of encouragement. I'm just going to share my heart because honestly, I didn't write them down, so I don't have them in my notebook. But I just want you to be encouraged and know that God sees, he knows, and he cares. He is mindful of us. He's not forgotten about us. He is the God of our salvation. He is more than enough, and his grace is sufficient. Amen. So don't get weary in the journey. Don't get tired. Don't give up, and don't quit. Now is not the time to quit. Now is the time to press in like never before. Amen. To God be the glory. And our scripture that is coming to my heart and mind at this time is Galatians. I believe six, nine, maybe six, where it says, do not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season you will reap if you do not faint. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Our word for giving. Now, I do have that written down. Hallelujah. I do have that written down. Are you excited about giving this morning? Hallelujah. Are you excited about giving? I am always excited about an opportunity to give to the Lord. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And let's look at verse 10. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 10. Why don't we back up? Because we're familiar with uh, verse 8. Back up with for me to verse 8. And I'm just going to touch on it. That God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Amen. The new, uh, the amplified version. God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance. So that you may always, under all circumstances, whatever the need, be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnish in abundance. For every good work and charitable donation. Amen. That's what the Bible say. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible say. That God is able and he makes all grace abound toward us when we give. Now, in verse... Verse 10, drop down. It says, now I need it in the regular, in New King James. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower. Who supplies our seed? Who supplies our seed? Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food. Not only does he give us seed to sow, Sierra, he supplies us food to eat. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. And not only does he supply it, he supplies it and multiplies it. Now, I don't know, adding is good. One plus one is one, two plus two, three plus three. But when you multiply, it goes a little bit faster and gets a little bit bigger, a little bit faster. So I'm, telling you, I'm encouraged to know that when I give, when you give, God multiplies the seed. Hallelujah. It is called the law of reciprocity. Luke 6, 38, you know what it says. What does it say? Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give unto your bosom for with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back. So I'm telling you, if you give, say, if I give, it's going to come back to me. Say, if I give, it's going to come back to me. Now that says to me, if I don't give, I don't have anything to come back. And it's not about equal. 
equal amount. It's about equal sacrifices. Because I may only have a dollar, honestly, in my pocket, in my purse, in my cash tray. I may only have a dollar. But he'll honor it just like he did the widow with two mites. And her name is known throughout the nations of glory to God for the memorial that she gave to the Lord. So whether it's a dollar or whether it's a thousand dollars, it's not equal amounts. It's equal sacrifices. But God, hallelujah, who supplies the seed, whether it's a dollar or a thousand, he will multiply it and it will come back to you. As you sow in the kingdom, know today that your seed will come back to you multiplied in Jesus' name. Multiplied in Jesus' name. Multiplied. If you would, go ahead and stand to your feet. We're going to pray. We're going to do our canopy of protection. Oh, glory to God. And we're going to move right along in today's service. Y'all doing good today? You looking real good. I'm so happy to be here with each and every one of you. To God be the glory. Lift those gifts up before the Lord. Father, we thank you and appreciate you that you are faithful. You're a faithful father. And you do supply us seed to sow and bread for food. You supply and multiply the seed that we've sown and increase the fruits of our righteousness. So we give you the praise. Hallelujah. We give you the praise for supplying us the seed and the, supplying us the bread. Hallelujah supplying us for what we need to make it grow and produce a rich harvest because of our generosity. Thank you. So we don't sow these gifts in vain. We don't sow them simply because it's the time to give. We sow it because we know, A, that you're able, and B, we're grateful. Hallelujah for what you've done in our lives. So this mere token in our hands that we're lifting up, whether it be an envelope, whether it be a phone, we're lifting it up saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for making a way for us to give, for us to do, and for us to be, all because that you did die on the cross for us and make it possible. So we thank you. We appreciate you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Come on and give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Come on and give it to him. Make sure you pass your buck in there as well. Hallelujah. Now at this time, we're going to go ahead and do our canopy of protection. Y'all ready? Y'all do know this works. Y'all do know it's covered you. You do know it's kept you. I mean, think about it, Destiny Christian Center. We haven't had any fatal accidents in the ministry. We've not had any fatal shootings in the ministry. Doggone it, we ain't had too many people pass away in the ministry. So I'm here to let you know, because we've been declaring the canopy of God's protection for almost 20 years, I'm here to tell you that it works. So let's lift our voices and say, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted that noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. And now we say our confession of faith. Please pay attention to the screens as we have just added a, a little uh, differential uh, phrase in here. And we don't want you to miss out on it. Amen. People are standing in line to get into Destiny Christian Center to hear the word of God. 
Every seat is filled in every service. Sunday morning worship at 10 a.m., Tuesday Bible study at noon, Wednesday evening worship at 7 p.m., Saturday morning intercessory prayer at 9 a.m., with streaming services full and overflowing with online viewers and any other service that we might have with expectations of signs, wonders, and miracles. Every need in this ministry is met, and we tithe givers. All of our property is paid for in full, and we owe no man nothing but to love him. We have every manner of skillful worker in every area for the building of the kingdom. Every member of this ministry soul is prospering in the word and is therefore wealthy, healthy, and wise. Every member of this church gives cheerfully and bountifully to finance the end time harvest. This is our season to prosper. The door of success has been opened. We shall succeed in everything in Christ. The doors of failure have been closed and we shall know no defeat. This is our season to prosper. The door of success has been opened. We shall succeed in everything in Christ. The doors of failure have been closed and we shall know no defeat. This is our season to prosper. The door of success has been opened. We shall succeed in everything in Christ. The doors of failure have been closed and we shall know no defeat. We declare together, being fully persuaded, that what he has promised, he was also able to perform. We believe, we receive all that God has for us. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Come on, celebrate God. Give him the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name worthy of all the glory, honor, and praise. You've won the victory for us, oh God. You did it because you loved us. We're so grateful. Oh, God. 
Come on, celebrate the King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You all may take your seats just for a moment, and I'm going to say a few things. I'm going to sing another song, and then I'm going I'm to go and say what God has for me to say. I said I was really kind of uh, in a quandary this morning. I wasn't sure uh, whether I was going to say anything, but I need you all to pray for me this morning. Our beloved aunt Jenny went to heaven last night so uh, everybody loved aunt Jenny and I'm not here to some of you know her you know she would sit there in the back and come from time to time and and so I figured if I got it out on the front end then I wouldn't be uh, choking up in the middle of the thing right 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 you know keeping trying to keep my eyelashes on you know I'm still vain I'm sad but I'm still vain y'all pray my strength in the Lord Oh, glory to God. That's why I ain't put no under eye makeup on because I knew I'd be crying and I ain't want my eyes all black. I am on TV. Oh, glory to God. But um, we just really solicit your prayers, um, especially for our family. It's my dad's uh, sister. So it's just two of them left out of eight. So um, it's just going to be difficult for them. So I just really solicit your prayers today while I'm preaching. I got a word. Oh, glory to God. I got a word. I got a word. And I know what my assignment is, but it wasn't no need of me in here, you know. And they're like, oh, my gosh, what's the matter with Pastor Sheila? Oh, my gosh, what's the matter? Why is she almost, you know. So now you know. That's what's the matter today. But I'm strong. I'm encouraged. Oh, glory to God. I know that when a saint goes home to be with God, it's all right. But we just going to miss him, amen. We just, we just going to miss him. And uh, so to God be the glory. To God be the glory. So y'all all right? Amen. Me too. Amen. I can't promise it's the last time that I'm going to cry this, this morning, but uh, we going to be all right. Amen. To God be the glory. So let's go ahead. I'm excited. I've had this word in my heart for probably about a month now and just was believing God for uh, the opportunity to share it because he wants you all to be encouraged today. He wants us, Pamela, to be encouraged today. And that's just what we're going to be, encouraged today. Amen. So let's go ahead and stand our feet. I'm going to give you our text. We're going to pray. And then I'm going to sing a little bit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Our text will be in John chapter 9, verses 24 and 25 in the New King James Version of the Bible. So then again, they called the man who was blind and said to him, give glory to God. 
we know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Red of heaven. Feed me till I want no more. Here's my cup. Fill it up and make me whole. Fill my cup, Lord. If you know it, sing it. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me. I want no more. Here's my cup. Fill it up and make me whole. Hallelujah. Fill my cup, Lord. Jesus to fill my cup, Lord, and make me whole. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill my cup, Lord. Only you. talking with somebody uh, yesterday or the day before, maybe Saturday, and, you know, the Bible declares in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11, that God has put eternity in the heart of man. And I said, well, how long is eternity? Eternity is forever. Eternity is forever. How do you feel eternity? You can't. But we need the Lord Jesus to fill us because he's placed that thing. We try to put so many things. You can't put nothing in eternity but God. You can't put nothing in eternity but God. If you try anything else, it's like it's like it's like trying to trying to put water, trying to put water in a strainer. It don't stay in there, oh glory to God. So we need him to fill us now. I know you thought you needed that, but you need him to fill you now. We need you to fill us now. Fill my cup. Fill my cup. Lord, fill my cup. Jesus, Jesus, fill my cup. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Fill my cup with your love, with your presence, with your power, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fill my cup. Fix all the broken places. Fill all the cracks and the bruises, God. Fill my cup. Fill my cup. Fill my cup. Yeah, yeah. And make me whole. That's what we're asking. Fill our cups, God. 
need you to fill us, Father. We need you to fill us, Father. Right now, right here. Fill us to the brim, overflowing. Overflowing, overflowing. Because when you fill us, God, you fix all the broken things. You seal all the cracks so that we can just know that you're what we really needed in the first place. So we ask this morning that your anointing would rest upon us, rest upon the hearers, and rest upon this preacher. Think through my mind and speak through my lips that your people today would be encouraged. We bind the strong man. We take authority over him now, and we render him inoperative and ineffective in this service today. Have your way, O oh God. Have your way, O oh God. In this place, in our lives, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, celebrate God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Well, you all can go ahead and take your seats. Uh, hallelujah. I remember being a little girl at Bethesda Presbyterian Church, and I tell you, I, I fought my mother tooth and nail going to that church. She should have whooped my tail every Sunday. Every Sunday, from the bedroom to the car, and she should have reached back in the car and whooped me, and then whooped me when I got out the car at the church, because I was just a little mean little girl going to Bethesda, and people didn't want to do nothing but love me, but I ain't like none of them. But I did remember a few spiritual things when I was there, and one of the things Presbyterians do is a lot of doxologies, and, and I, I will never forget, you know, you know, praise God from whom all blessings flow, praise him, all creatures here below, right, y'all, I'm not, they, they saying that at y'all church too? Oh, wow, that's great, amen, that's great, I, you know, I, you know, I'm like, why are they singing this song, it's so boring, the pipe organs, the whole thing, right, but I remember that, and I remember that, and this uh, doxology, uh, it is a declaration of who God is and his goodness, his greatness, his glory. It's magnifying, amplifying, and testifying of who God is. And so that was, that's what makes that doxology so great. Jesse, it's so good to see you. I don't think I've seen you in six months. Oh, my gosh, I'm so happy to see you. I'm going to have those outbreaks every now and then once I realize who's behind the mask. So just pardon the interruption. You know, just go with me. Amen. And, and we just going to continue to praise the Lord. And, and when I was writing my message, see, we just go right back into it. And, you know, the first thing that was what came to my heart and my spirit as I began writing. And then the next one that came was Psalm 103, verse 1, where it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Psalm 104, verse 1 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God. You are very great, and you are clothed with honor and majesty. We need to magnify and think on and focus on the greatness of God, especially now especially now, especially now, we need to focus on the greatness of God. So I wanted to just take a few moments just to think about the greatness of God. I, I ain't going to lie to you. I mean, you know, my, between my, my, my glasses being cloudy and, you know, my contacts being foggy and, you know, these multifocal lenses are, are such a blessing and, you know, but I had to blink my eyes a few times lest I think, lest I think that this pandemic is greater than God. But I, I just, you know, we thought it was going to be over in two weeks, but here we still are. But I blinked my eyes a few times, maybe even had to take the contacts out, clean the glasses, hallelujah, put them back on and look and say, now I see. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. So that's why you got to give God the glory sometimes first. That's why you got to praise him in the sanctuary first. That's why you got to say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, in your car. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, in your kitchen. Because the God that we serve is great. This pandemic has I don't, I don't, I don't, it's changed my perspective. It's heightened my perspective. Anybody that wears glasses wants to see an HD, crystal clear, sharp. We want it. And, and so, you know, we're seeing things, right? But God wants us to see it clearly. This pandemic has helped me. It has helped me to see some things clearly from God's per perspective. And that's really what we need. Amen. Say, I need... God's perspective. Say it again like you really need it. God's perspective. We all need it. We all need his outlook, his stand, his viewpoint to be encouraged. 
We need to look at God because if we start looking at the other stuff, we all disencouraged, discombobulated, and, you know, just run around. It's funny how you start crying in the store. Don't nobody even bother with you. They figure you crying because something done, Rona done got you, or the virus done got you, or something done happened. So the people don't even bother you crying in the store. I was crying in the store the other day. Nobody even say nothing to me. That's because everybody crying somewhere. So I ain't even feel better. I ain't feel like they looked over me. They just probably came out the bathroom crying their own self. So, I mean, hey, you know, just look, Just if somebody crying in the store, just go give them some tissue and say, I was just crying too. It's going to be all right. Because it's perspective. We, we see it different. We think it different. We, you know, we, we look at things differently. And, and God has done that for me. And I'm not the same I'm not the same preacher that I was six months ago. I'm not the same person that I was six months ago. I'm not the same parent that I was six months ago because this pandemic, these problems, the perplexities has helped me to open my eyes and see God. And that's what we need to do. So this morning I'm going to be sharing with you from the thought pandemic perspective. Now I see. Pandemic perspective. And my prayer really is that you all would have that uh, perspective. I'm gonna. I got three points, and my my goal in my mind. We were shouting all the way out of them double doors, shouting while we were eating our sandwiches afterwards, and shouting. So I just pray that it goes how I saw it in my mind. I, I just pray to God it goes, and if not, I'm gonna sing. I'm gonna make myself sing because uh, we just need to sing, and we need we need to say. Now I see. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. So few points today pandemic perspective we want God's perspective three points first one number one my points for what how can I how can you write this question down how can you acquire God's perspective in a pandemic how can you how can I acquire God's perspective in a pandemic it can be acquired but there's three key things that you will have to do now you can probably get some other things but these three will be able to set you on the right track amen number one number one and this has helped me I'm Tariel this has helped me gain perspective in this pandemic number one pray number one pray now listen the our text says and I love it John 9 25 he answered and said whether he is a sinner or no I do not know one thing I know that though I was blind now I see now, them doggone Pharisees Ooh, then, then we can't even say yep them Pharisees because sometimes we act just like them now I see you know I, I've, I've been acting a little bit like a Pharisee so I've had to I've had to make some adjustments I've had to make some 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 room for God's growth amen because these Pharisees were trying to find reason to accuse Jesus they were trying to find they were building their case because they wanted him dead they wanted him off of the site off of the scene so here's this man born blind who could not see and they all trying to figure out well why what did he do wrong? What his mom and them do? But Jesus healed him. Jesus healed him. And so his answer, we, the Pharisees said, we know this man is a sinner. And so the man that could see now, he said, well, I don't know. I don't know what he is or what he was. All I know is this morning when I woke up, I couldn't see. This man y'all calling a sinner, he touched me. And now I, I was blind. And now so I don't care what y'all call him. I don't care what you think about him. But I ain't been able to see since I was born and since I knew that there was a thing called sight. But this man that you call the sinner, call him what you want. But once I was blind, now I see. Now I see. Now I see. Now I see. He was blind. And in this pandemic, in this pandemic, we can become spiritually blind. Because you start looking. I said to you all, you just start looking at everything around you. And don't look at everything around you. Everything around you that's going on is going on, and it's going to go on whether you look at it or not. Amen? And the cure for spiritual blindness is prayer. The cure for spiritual blindness is prayer. If you want to be able to see, if you want to be able to discern and ascertain God's goodness in a pandemic, you must be a people of prayer. In order to gain and maintain God's perspective in this pandemic, we must remain in a place of prayer. Did you write that down? In order to gain and maintain God's 
perspective in this pandemic, we must remain in a place of prayer. Now, when I said that, if I were to do a poll right now, uh, Sister Nisi had said, and asked everybody, do you pray? Most people are going to say yes. But if we are praying, why are things still a little topsy-turvy? Why are things, I'm telling you, I need, I need you all to understand this because Destiny Christian Center is a house of prayer. This ministry has been founded on prayer. But if it, now I'm not gonna, I'm gonna say some things this morning that's gonna help us to see because we cannot just pray because somebody's gonna come and ask me, did I pray? No, we have to pray because if I don't pray, I'm going to lose my mind. Hallelujah. We must understand that if I don't pray, now I might lose my house. If I don't pray, they done already furloughed me. They done already cut my wages. Hallelujah. I'm about to get my last unemployment check. If you do not pray, you will think that God who created the trees to make the money, you'll begin to think that that same God that did it, that he's not going to get you through to the other side. I'm telling you, you have to be, you have to be praying. Well, pastor, I'm praying, but I'm still missing something. Let me tell you, I said that too. Truth be told, truth be told, all of us, I was praying, but this, it ain't, it ain't hitting me. I, I was praying and I don't feel no better. I was praying and my house still foreclosed. I was praying, I was giving, and they still took my car. Okay, I was praying, I was giving, I was fasting, I was believing God, and this thing still went left. I was praying. Then I hear, I did that, and it doesn't work. How do you know prayer doesn't work? Because sometimes it takes more than one prayer. Sometimes it takes more than one situation to make you pray like that. Because we will pray, you know, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, at Destiny, Destiny Christian Center, we may make our prayer a little more deep, a little more relevant, you know, because we know that that's not the Lord's prayer. That's the prayer that Jesus prayed after his disciples asked him to teach him how to pray. But if we are that people of prayer, we ought to know it's not personal, it's warfare. Do you know, do you know that the enemy is out to, to, to take you out? Do you know the enemy want to take you out? Do you know the enemy wants you dead? Do you know the enemy doesn't want you to see? Do y'all realize that? Do you realize the enemy wants you to lose your mind? He wants you to lose everything so that you can say to God you're praying to ain't there? Do you realize that? Do you realize that the enemy wants to get you so frustrated that you stop praying because if you're not praying, it's not going to happen. But I said, you know what? I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray no matter how I feel. I'm not happy right now. I don't feel good right now. I'm frustrated right now. I'm just talking about me. I'm not talking about y'all because I know nobody has been frustrated since March 17, 2020 and the current. I know I know we done bought houses, cars, and lands, and, you know, I'm just talking to y'all so you can encourage somebody on your job. Waking up every morning and walking on that pathway and, and walking back and forth and lifting my eyes and saying, God, you know, help me, forgive me. What am I doing? God, holy Lord, Father. But I, I, you know, all the formalities go out the window. You just say Jesus. You just walk and you just say Jesus, 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 Jesus. I don't know. I don't know what to say. I know I should know what to say. I'm the, I'm the first pastor, doctor, lady at Destiny Christian Center. We illuminating the pathway to purpose through the teaching of God's word. I should know what to say when I pray. But I'm telling you, when you, you gain perspective. You'll gain perspective. And I told the Lord this morning, when I was praying this morning, I said, God, I've not ceased to pray in this six months. I've not ceased to pray. And now, now I see. So if my, if, and this is what you need to understand. If your first day of, if your last day of prayer is predicated upon your first day of prayer and continuing up to your last day of prayer, I'm here to tell you that breakthrough is on the way. I'm here to tell you if you would just stick and stay with it. If you would keep praying because, because, y'all know the devil want to take you out, right? You know that the devil hates you, right? And
Hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory to God. I'm mad now because I realize in spite of, in, in, in my praying, the enemy is tormenting, has been tormenting some of you and say, what's the use? Why are you doing it? Why bother? Lachey, you bother because your legacy is at stake. That's why you bother. That's why you keep praying because your kids are dependent on your prayers. Amen. Our children need to see that even though, even though I am dragging my left leg behind me, I got my arm in my purse, and I think my nose and my ears is in my wallet. Your kids need to know when you are all discombobulated. Well, I know mama was having a hard time, but that matter, I always saw her praying. I saw her praying, dragging her leg, looked like her arm was hanging out her purse. She ain't even know I burnt dinner because she her nose was in her wallet. Because we have to teach te y'all, keep your kids' legacy is at stake. Stop praying if you want to. Stop praying if you want to. I'm mad now. I'm mad now. I'm mad now. Because the enemy thinks he's got us beat. But he, I, I came today to serve him notice that God is greater. And we will do what God has called us to do. Amen. <laughs> to God be the glory. So we have to pray. I know you're hurting. I know you're confused. I know you think you're all right. I know you're thinking, hey, this online church is good for me. I don't even never got to go back to the house of God. I'm good. I'm good. Uh-huh. I know. I know. That's why you need to keep praying. Because online church ain't good for us. Online church is like eating jelly beans and Skittles all day long. Amen. It'll get you high for the moment. You'll be excited for the moment. But you keep eating too many Skittles and jelly beans, you're going to be sick. So this online church isn't good for us. That's why we need to keep praying. Because when we pray, we hunger and thirst for righteousness. When we pray as the deer pants for the water, our soul longs after God. When we pray, when we pray. But if you stop praying, if you stop praying, I'm here to tell you. I'm here. If you don't stay in a place of prayer, if you don't keep praying, I know I get it. Even the kids. Prayer don't make sense to kids. But I'm telling you, tell your babies to pray. Look, if you got a cat or a dog, bring them in the room. Get them. Teach them. Do something. Because if you want to keep God's perspective. In this pandemic, you must remain a people of prayer. You must remain a people of prayer. Why? Because, go with me to Judges chapter 21. Judges 21. This going to help you. I told you, I, I saw it all in my head. We all going to be dancing in the streets. 2125. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. In those days, there was a pandemic all over the world. And social distancing and the quarantine and the stay in place order made people have to stay at home and everyone did what was right in his own eyes. There was a pandemic and, and everyone did what was right in his own eyes. In this pandemic, people are thinking it's okay to do this, that, and the other. Because we're not being held accountable spiritually. We're not in a place spiritually. Do you realize sitting next to somebody else's spiritual helps your spirit? Even if they ain't as spiritual as you, their spirit man connects with yours and something happens when we gather. Do you realize there is a demonic entity that is at work behind the scenes and keeping the body of Christ out of church? Because in those days, there was a pandemic and everyone did what was right in his own eyes. I'm here to tell you, if you think what you're doing is right and you know it's wrong, you're not praying. If you're sitting around mad at somebody saying they did this to me and they did that to me and I'm offended, you doing what you feel is right in your own eyes. We cannot even stand in a place and say they did that to me. Well, what did, who are they and what did they do? I told you, what if God unleashed they on you to fix you? Whoever they are, but you mad at they. You mad at them. I'm offended at them. You don't know what they did. I'm telling you in this perspective, does it really matter what they did? Does it really matter? Does it, Sister Stewart, Sister Stewart, you've been offended. So you done, you done been mad at people from one end of the country to the next. But did it make a difference staying mad at them? Because if we stay mad at our brothers and sisters in Christ, you know what that does? That keeps us separated. That keeps us divided. 
That keeps us, well, I don't, see, now that I'm, because I'm right in my own eyes, I'm justified in what has happened to me because you don't know, it doesn't matter what they did. Tell you, it doesn't matter what they did. You better keep praying. You better keep fasting. You better keep seeking God and ask him to open your eyes so that you can see what in the world is going on here. What are you trying to do in me? What are you trying to change in me? What are you trying to fix in me? Hallelujah. But if you're not praying, I know I'm right. So I'm walking away from God in a pandemic. How do you walk away from God in a pandemic? Because you're doing what you feel is right. Can I be real honest with you? I'm telling you this pandemic has brought me perspective. I thought for a moment, well, what's the use? Why am I serving God? Past six months, Pamela, what's the use? But I still came and stood before you Sunday after Sunday, stream after stream. Sometimes I was looking a little bit more tired than others. Because I'm telling you, you'll begin to wonder. And whatever you thought it was before this pandemic started, God is saying, it ain't even that. It's not even about that. You Are you going to pray? You going to keep praying? Or are you going to sit here and feel sorry for yourself and act like you're the only one that's having troubles on this side of glory? You better keep praying. Say, I need to keep praying. I'm telling you, I'm sitting out there. I, I have not ceased to pray. And God has not been intimidated by my questions. God has not been intimidated by me being in a quandary because I kept praying and I kept crying out to God and kept asking him to show himself strong. I kept asking him to open my eyes so that I can see. Help me to live my life for you. I want to bring you glory, God. But you can't say I want to bring you glory, God, if you're not praying. If you're not praying. You're sitting in a closet, sitting in a, in, in a, that's what I'm telling you. I'm, I'm, I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. But I ain't got there yet, and I'm not going to skip. You know, I like preaching my notes. Don't do what you think is right. Pray. Jesus withdrew in prayer, and he's our example, right? Luke 5, 16. So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Are you, are you withdrawing yourself to pray? Are you, are you asking yourself, self, and when I'm feeling some kind of way, am I getting on the phone and telling people how I'm feeling? Am I just sitting there talking to myself, feeling sorry for myself? Am I doing whatever? Am I going shopping? Or are you withdrawing yourself and coming into a place of prayer? Preachers need to pray. Acts 6, 4, but when we give ourselves continually to prayer, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and ministry of the word. This preacher has been giving herself continually to prayer and ministry of the word. Because I, I can't afford to be trying to do stuff that I think is right in my own. I'm telling you, I think I'm right. Oh, y'all don't either? I always think I'm right. I'm always right, and y'all always wrong. Everybody always wrong. That ain't how you do it. That ain't how it's supposed to be done. It's supposed to be this way. It's supposed to be, and my way is right. Surely you knew. Uh-uh, not no pandemic. Whose way is right? God's way is right. And he has given me the opportunity to be before him another day. He's graced me to wake up and suck air in and blow it out. I ought to be grateful to God, not thinking that my way is the right way. We must be a people of prayer. People need to pray. You know these verses, Luke 18, 1. Then he spoke a parable to them that men ought to always pray and not lose heart. Romans 12, 12, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. Are you, am I, write down in your book, type it in, am I continually, continually, continuing steadfastly in prayer? Am I continuing, continuing steadfastly in prayer? Colossians 4 2 continue earnestly in prayer am I continuing earnestly in prayer being vigilant in it or is it just a thank you Jesus kind of prayer you got to be vigilant during these type these these you got to be vigilant you know you got to hold vigils you know it's, you might need to go stand out in front of your own house and put candles out in front of your own house and, and sing songs out in front of your own house and, and just hold your own vigil because you know the way things is going now if you don't continue earnestly in prayer I'm telling you I'm telling you I'm not telling you because I think you drifting away. I'm telling you because I'm trying to keep my tail by the fire. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm trying to keep me close to the flame. Two people is trying to do that too. Amen. I mean, you know, it's like when they do the wave, if only one person do it, it ain't no good. I mean, you know, one person clap. Can I, so now y'all got to clap for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. We must be a people of prayer. And when you continue in prayer, 
when you continue in prayer. God will speak things to you like Ezekiel 37. Go to Ezekiel 37, verse 1. We read verses 1 through 6. Ezekiel 37. Hallelujah. So how do I maintain, how do I acquire God's perspective in a pandemic? Number one, I got to pray. Number two, I have to prophesy. I have to prophesy. Are you there? Ezekiel 37, verse 1. The Bible says, The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley. Indeed, they were very dry. So God is coming upon many of us. He wants our perspective to change, and he's sitting us down in the midst of this thing and causing us to look around. It's like one of those sci-fi movies when, you know, like I'm thinking like, uh, what's that, what's the movie um, with Trinity and them in it? What's the movie, the, uh, the Matrix, right? So they're like pulled out of their reality and placed into another reality and looking around and things are different. God will bring us up and set us down in the middle of the thing and cause you to look around cause you to look around just to just to look around your life look around your family look around your church will cause you to look around that's what the scripture said then he caused he caused me to pass by all of them and behold hallelujah because the, the valley was full of dry bones there were many in the open valley and they were indeed very dry we are in a very dry season and he said to me son of man can these bones live so he's asking you, people of God, will this pandemic ever end? Will you ever, will, will, will you ever get to the other side of this pandemic? Are you going to recover? And then he says, and again, so then he says, son of man, can these bones live? So I answered and said, oh, Lord God, you know. We cannot even begin to try to figure out when things are going back to normal. So when God asked us the question, when he asks us, can you survive this pandemic? When is this? Oh, well, only you know, Lord. Only you know, Lord. Verse 4. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Do you hear what God is saying to you today? You're standing in the midst of your situation. And everything seems to be going some kind of way. And okay, 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 you all right. You've not missed any bills. It don't even feel like you in a, in a pandemic because, you know, you just staying in the house more. And you don't mind because you ain't want to go outside anyway. But what about the, the social injustice and the political injustice and, and people's businesses are closing and, and all of that and we're looking around and your spirit man is drying up and you don't know how you're going to regain. You, you're asking God to restore to you the joy of your salvation. He's saying the way to have the joy of your salvation restored is to prophesy life, to prophesy hallelujah victory, to prophesy we are in a place in the middle of a problem and God is asking us a question. Are you going to live? Are you going to survive? Are you going to make it through to the other end? He's saying prophesy. And don't just prophesy in church. It's easy to say here God is good all the time. It's good to say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It's good to say, I got to praise, I got to praise, I got to praise, and I got to get it out here. But are you singing that at home? Are you prophesying to your mind at home? Are you prophesying over your children at home? Are you prophesying, or what are you, what are, what, what are you saying? Are you prophesying life or death? Are you saying, I'm not going to make it? Nobody loves me. Nobody cares. Nobody called. Nobody's even, nobody, if I, if I were, if I were to die today, no one would even. Do you know that's a prophecy the devil wants you to say out loud? Because our life and death are in the power of our tongue and those who love it will eat the fruit. If you believe the things you say will be done, you will have whatever you say. So if you, he just, he just wants to nudge you just enough to say, nobody's going to miss me if I'm 
that's when you really need to pull your shoulders back and with every ounce of Holy Ghost you got in it and say, I will not die. I will live. I will declare the goodness of the Lord. I will declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I will prophesy life to myself. I will prophesy life over my children. I will prophesy life over my family. It looks like it's all going to hell in a handbasket, but I will prophesy. I will say what God has to say. I will speak the word only, and I will let the word work. I will prophesy. I will prophesy. And you can't just prophesy prophesy at church. Let's say you feeling pretty good right now, ain't you? you? You look so pretty. You just had a birthday. You got a birthday coming up or you had it already? Friday's your birthday? So you're real happy. You, you know, and it's a happy place to be and it's a happy time. But do you all, have you felt always happy in these past six months? Since this pandemic has started, you felt good the whole time? Oh, okay. You felt good. Okay, I need somebody who felt like they was about to be flushed down the toilet. I need somebody, you know, to feel like that they, if, 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 look, if, if you don't flush me down the toilet, I'm going to flush myself down the toilet. You got to prophesy. Ain't nobody flushing me down nobody's toilet. I am not refuse. I am not waste. God did not waste his time for my mama and my daddy to get together and lay up in the sack and conceive me and birth me and raise me and get me to this place for me to sit here at 53 years old and say, won't nobody miss me if I'm gone. You better prophesy. Whether somebody prophesies it over you or not. Because it don't fit. I mean, again, Trish, you going to make it. You don't believe me. When you in that when you in that hole, I could tell you all day, Simone, you're gonna make it. You gonna make it, but if you don't believe it, a man persuaded against his will is a man of the same opinion still. So I could tell you you can make it all day long, Latrice, but if you don't believe me, that's why people commit suicide. That's why, isn't that why they commit suicide? Because somebody's telling them, Latifa, they tell them, that's why they got the suicide hotlines. They want them to call and they're telling them, you can make it, you can do it, you're gonna be all right. Sometimes they hang up and still do it. But the way that you'll be persuaded, that you have a destiny, that you have a purpose, that God has a plan for your life, I'm here to tell you right here and right now, you will live and not die and declare the goodness of the Lord. You will. If you would just keep praying, no matter how you feel, and if you would keep saying what God says, in spite of what you want to say about yourself. I'm telling you. I'm tell I don't know about y'all. I don't know. I don't know about y'all. In the year that this pandemic happened, I've been saved 33 years. And I feel like everything that I've known has been nailed to the cross. Jesus was crucified at 33. I've been serving God for 33 years. And he has crucified me. He has put me in a place where he said, daughter, is your will really what's paramount here? Put it on the cross. Is how you're feeling right now paramount over me? Nail it to the cross. Is what everybody else is, and I know, and I'm not now. Don't 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 even get in your mind that she feels this. I'm trying I'm trying to talk y'all language too, because I know I know if it's in my head, it's at least in one other person's head out there. So I'm just trying to help you, so you don't have to leave out here and say she preaching because this that or other has happened because this uh, this that and other has happened to you, and you were sitting there and you was wanting to do whatever you wanted to do to yourself. But I'm here to tell you when my flesh got nailed to the cross. And I can, I mean, and all, and it's probably going to get on the cross before Jesus come back. One more guy, you know, because sometimes we come back to life. I told somebody the other day, Shirley has been cremated. She has been cremated, turned into dust. She is not allowed to put her particles back together and cause me to think I'm nobody other than God's daughter. But that can only happen. When you crucify, the Bible says in Galatians 3.20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but, but, but Christ in me. I have been crucified with Christ. I don't want my will to be done. I'm telling you, in a pandemic, now I see. If I don't prophesy life, I'm going to prophesy my own death. Mother Poole, God rest her soul. She kept saying, my kid's going to be the death of me. And you know what happened? You know what? You know what? You know what she died from? One of her kids called. And she had a stroke like shortly after one of the kids called. And she died like three months later. She prophesied her death. Oh, y'all not going to be the death of me. 
ain't nobody going to be the death of me. You need to, again, I'm not saying that y'all the death of me. I'm just saying that people not going to be the death of me. You need to tell yourself that people not going to be the death of me. These people on my job not going to be the death of me. This social injustice is not going to be the death of me. I don't care who's in the White House. It's not going to be the death of me. I am going to prophesy, and I am going to declare the goodness of the Lord, and I'm going to live because I have life to live. <laughs> prophesy, prophesy, prophesy victory. Prophesy that you're an overcomer. Prophesy that you're going to make it. Prophesy, prophesy, prophesy when you don't feel like it. You can do it here. You can do it here at church. What you gonna do in the car? What you gonna be saying when you in the bathroom? Just got out the, you know, it's just you in the bathroom. What you gonna say then? You better prophesy that you God's son. You better prophesy that you're God's daughter. And I'm telling you, when we begin to prophesy, when we are surrounded by lack and fear and death and anything that presents itself bigger than God, when you prophesy, I'm telling you, I'm here to tell you, it's going to be all right. Say, I will. I will. I will, I will. Prophesy. prophesy. Now, again, I, you can't, some, you know, you can't kind of, you got to have that, I'm mad at it thing on it. You got to have that, you know what? I'm mad now. I'm mad now. You should not have made me mad. Well, maybe that's what God was trying to do, make you mad so you would get a little gumption in your voice instead of, stop, quit doing that. Why are you bothering me? The devil is a liar. Prophesy life to the dry areas of your life. Prophesy that you are who God says you are. Amen. Prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. When you don't see that anything's happening, you have to prophesy. When you feel like it's going to break, you have to prophesy. Because here's the thing. As I get ready to go to my next point, here's the thing. God knew it was going to happen. Isaiah 46.10, God saw the beginning. He saw the end from the beginning, declaring the end from the beginning. You understand what that means? That means at the end, he saw your beginning, and he knows you're just in the middle of it. He already knew you were going to be here today. He knew you were going to have on a white sweater, cute little white tennis shoes, a little neck. He, he knew already, he already knew all of that. He knew, he already knew. He already so because he, he saw the end, he saw the beginning from the end. So that means I'm going to be all right. God is sovereign in every single thing in your life has passed through the fingers of God. And it did not happen without his permission. It did not happen without his permission. Amen? So you're going to be all right. Now, when you see that God is sovereign, when you see that all, if I, if I could just pray, even when, I mean, prayer can sometimes be like learning a foreign language. You feel clumsy at it. You feel like you've been taught enough about it that I've been doing Duolingo Spanish for about a year, and I'm, I'm telling you, I should be fluent. But doggone it, I go to talk to somebody Spanish, every, all of my lessons go out the window. I forget everything but see, no, and no. I forget everything. But that don't mean I'm going to stop because I know at one of these points my mind's going to unlock and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it. And so prayer is the same way. I know you feel like you're just, it's, it's a foreign language and it's not working and it's not happening and the dots aren't connecting. And my prayer is, Sarah, you know your prayers do make a difference. Our prayers do make a difference. And I know sometimes y'all sitting there up in the room wondering, are you, is what you pray making a difference? Yes, what you prayed has made a difference. That you even open your mouth and said, I will pray, makes a difference because the devil tried to get you to not open your mouth and pray because he knew that if you don't pray, it's not going to make a difference. It's not going to make a difference. So number one, if you want to maintain God's perspective in a pandemic, number one, you have to what? Number two, you have to? And number three, you have to praise. Now, this was the one. This was the one. Have you ever, have you ever seen anybody in Walmart catching the Holy Ghost? I, I, I have to use that terminology, but y'all know what I mean. You know, you know, I mean, yeah, in Walmart, you ever seen anybody? Okay, so we got one person, right? You ever seen somebody, you know? In Walmart, I ain't never seen it. I like going to Walmart. I go to Walmarts all across the country. I would have went to Walmart in Mexico, but I, I wasn't sure. You know, they did not play English, so I, you know, I've been to Walmarts all over the place in church towns, and I have never seen anybody just getting happy in the frozen food section. 
I've never seen it. Usually, where do we see people getting happy? Huh. Now, what's the problem with that? Where are your problems happening at church? No. In the, in, in the frozen food section, when you only buy the peas, because you can only afford the peas, when you really wanted broccoli. But because you can only afford what you can afford. I'm telling you. But we get so in a religious mindset. And I think Dr. Poole, that's why he's so recalcitrant to, you know, the music going off in church and everybody, you know, just, you know. And I'm like, come on, babe, let him go. Let him go. I want to play my tambourine. I want to play my tambourine. I want to, you know, I, I've been practicing. And, and, you know, and he's like, mm -mm, mm -mm. But if you're not going to praise God at home, because see here, this is the atmosphere for it. This is, this is, it's conducive for it here. But if you're not going to sing a song of Zion when you are laying up in the night, and I'm telling you, God is dealing with me. I ain't even talking to y'all. I might as well be in here by myself with the few camera crew and the phone and my, me by myself. Because God is challenging everything that I just was thought so amazed. I mean, I love that. I love the church music. But am I, am, I, am I praising God over the dishes while I'm crying when I receive the report? Am I giving God the glory when they told me? I'm telling you, I'm telling you, the beauty, the beauty of Aunt Jenny's passing. They told her last year. She was put in hospice care last June. In June, and I knew it because Deaconess Simons, she would go see about Aunt Jenny all the time, and she said, Pastor? Did you know Aunt Jenny was in hospice? I'm like, how she know? And that ain't her TT. How she know? So I called my other TT. I said, what's going on? I said, so what does hospice mean? That means you about to die. Hospice means they've done all they can do and you are about to die. So I'm saying, so what you saying? Aunt Jenny about to die? Well, well, sweetheart. So I said, okay. So. But that was June of 2019. Here we are in September of 2020. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. And I'm telling you, we would go over there, and I said, Pam, I don't think, I don't think nothing wrong with her. I mean, it's just the regular, you know, the, the thing. You know, she need oxygen. I'm telling you, she was, hey, baby, how you doing? Oh, I'm so, and call it, call it Aunt Jenny for scriptures. I don't know, call it, call it, asking us to pray. Call, I mean, Aunt Jenny, what? and I'm like, but it hit me one day. Latifa, I went over there, and I left out the room. It said hospice patient on the side of the tree. Thank God. So now here we are. It all came full circle. But God gave us almost a whole nother year with Aunt Jenny. And you know what is the, the shouting music of Aunt Jenny? She gave her heart to the Lord. She's a, she's a born-again Christian. She gave her heart to the Lord maybe about five or six years ago. I don't remember how long ago it was, but she and she knew. I love the Lord. I love the Lord. God knows I love him. God knows. Can you bring me a Bible? The Bible you brought me, the letters is too small. Can you bring me a magnifying glass? I took a magnifying glass a year ago. So I'm here to tell you, just because they say that you're about to die, it doesn't mean that you're about to die. You better get up off of your laurels, and you better stand up in your kitchen, and you better sing praises unto God, and you better lift up your voice with a voice of triumph over your dishes in your car. Hallelujah. In, in the night watches, you better lift up your voice. The Bible says in Habakkuk 3.17, and this is where I begin to conclude. This is where I begin to conclude. You know where I'm going, Sister Stewart. You know what I'm about to say. Though the fig, tank, fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the field yield no fruit, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, I will yet rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Look how the message says it. You ought to be getting excited now. I'm telling you, I'm mad now. I got a righteous indignation that is stirred up within me that has caused me to want to fight like never before. Though the cherry trees don't blossom and the strawberries don't ripen, though the apples are worm-eaten and the wheat fields stunted, though the sheep 
pens are sheepless and the cattle barn. That's a bad way when the cattle barns is empty, though. The cattle barns, though. When the cattle barns, Rachel, is empty, you know it's about to end now. Hallelujah. When the cattle barns are empty, you better sing joyful praise to God, turning cartwheels of joy to the Savior, my God. I said, wait a minute now, Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, Pam, I almost feel like I need to go in my backyard. I, I feel like I need to do this, but then a part of me feel like I don't because I might wrench my wrist. But I feel like I just I just need to go turn a cartwheel. I feel like I just need to go in my, not in church. You get, I'm telling you, it hit me. Because we, I mean, I, listen, I... Ah, Dr. Poole be messing with me. He don't want me to sing. You know, I got sunshine on a cloudy day. He don't want me to sing the songs from the 70s in Walmart. And I'm telling you, I'll be trying to, babe, babe, babe. I ain't never seen nobody get happy in the aisles. But you know there be people in Walmart who don't know how they're going to pay it. You know, people, I've been at that checkout line, and I knew my checking account was a negative, and I was just hoping that debit card, I just hope, I just hope they would just let it ride over and let me pay, let me pay the late charges later. I just need this to go through because my babies don't want to go through me. All while you at Walmart, it's easy to do it here. And then you even want to see people. They, I, I don't know. I think it's a school maybe. I do know it's a hoopology place you can go to where you can learn. I think I might go there just so I can improve on my hooping skills that Dr. Poole say I ain't got, but I'm telling you, you hit that piano right, you know, and, and make me hear something, I, it, 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 it's going to come out. It's going it, 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 to come out, but, 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 but you shouldn't have to have no class to... If you're not doing that at home, stop doing it in church. Although there's power when we do it at church. There's power because at, at church, Latrice, at church, that's the place that gets the wheel turned. That's the place where you begin to say, to God be the glory for the things that he has done. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. By his blood, he has saved me. By his love. You know what it says? That's what happens in church. You sing to God be the glory at church so that when you leave it out, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. And everybody said, Jesus' name, amen. You still on the car. To God be the glory for the things he has done. If you're only going to do it at church, I'm telling you. But church is where it gets started. Church is where it gets started, where you realize I am going to remain in a place of prayer. I'm going to prophesy life over my situation. I'm going to raise the praise in the house of God, and I'm going to have a praise party right from the sanctuary at church into the sanctuary of my living room. I'm going to give God the glory. I'm going to give him the praise. I'm going to lift up the name of God. It doesn't matter how I feel. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I'm going to give God the glory. Somebody ought to shout. Because until you learn how, to give God glory at home. You will only have victory in public. And I'm tired of standing behind a pulpit and people looking saying, oh, everything is going all right. But at my house, there I am crying. There I am frustrated, disillusioned, and hard to get along with. But when I come to this place, hallelujah, and I say, to God be the glory, and I keep doing it heaven in my driveway, I just believe everything's going to be all right. I just believe everything's going to be all right, Tifa. Tifa, we're going to be all right, baby. We're going to be all right. Your kids are going to grow up and be who God said they're going to be. Hallelujah. Your kids are going to run nations. Your kids are going to run businesses. Your daughters are going to dream dreams and see visions. Don't be moved by what you see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It starts here. Now, I just want to know. And we're going to, I'm telling you, I saw us singing that song. You, we, I'm telling you, we're going we're gonna to sing that. Just play it while I'm talking. To God be the glory. God be the glory. To God be the glory for the things he has done. Come on, praise him. To God be the glory. Hey. To God come on, come on, come. be the glory. Come on, hey, hey, to hey. God hey. be the glory for the, the things he has done. Now listen, I'm here to tell you, you got to keep singing. 
You got to keep doing this now. You can't see. See, okay, wait. We got to start over. We got to start over. We got to start over. This is why we got to start over. Oh, I think I'm out the camera. Okay. This is why we got to start over. Because, see, that's what happened. See, the music ain't hitting them right. Brandon, Joshua, the music ain't hitting right. So they don't want, you know, they ain't going to sing it right. But, see, the music ain't going to hit you right. You know, if, if it ain't going to hit you right here, it ain't going to hit you right over the dishes. It ain't going to hit you right over the dishes. But it's over the dishes where you're feeling depressed. It's over the dishes where you're feeling discouraged. So I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to prime the pump. I'm going to be singing. I don't know about you. Look, I might call you, Sister Stewart, and just start singing to you. To God be the, the glory. glory. Hey, hey. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. For the things. Hey, hey. For the things. Hey, hey. For the things. Hey, two times. For the things. For the things, things he has done. Come on, lift your voice inside. Hey, hey, hey. Be the glory. Ah, oh, yeah. Come on. Be the glory to God. Be the glory for the things he Listen to me. Listen to me. Y'all listen to me? Y'all listen to me? Y'all listen to me? Okay, now I'm, I'm here to tell you. You're going to have a fight this week. But I just want to know, will anybody give God the glory at home? Will you just clap and, and put on your favorite praise song at home? Whether, whether you feel like it or not. Will you feel like it or not? Will you just give him a praise? Will you just give him a praise? Now listen, this is what I saw. This is what I saw. This is what I saw. I said, I'm going to tell the people. I'm going to tell the people just for a few minutes, look, put your mask on, stand right in front of your chair because we're supposed to be social distance. I don't want nobody's spit to get on nobody else. But I just want you to take a few minutes to give God, because I, I, know, I know I'm not the only one who's been going through just a little bit. Hallelujah. At the house. I'm excited at church. I'm excited to see y'all. But I just want to know that y'all just, just, just need to do what you need to do. There's a little bit extra something, you know. You know, do something. Sam, you know, do whatever you need to do. Just a few minutes, okay? Can y'all do that for me? And then when you get to the house, I want you to do the same thing while you're standing over your dishes. To God.
many marvelous things for the things he has done. Now I'm telling you, come on, give him glory. Give him glory this morning. This message means nothing if it's only captured in this room. I remember a movie where they were trying to break out of a prison with a spoon. Sometimes you may feel like you are trying to break out of whatever you're going through with the smallest of resources. But they kept digging with a spoon, digging. They were, they were unjustly uh, incarcerated, digging with a spoon. And one day they found a root. So you know root means we close to the wall because there's trees there. And so they kept digging and in the midst of their digging, the one man died, and he said, you got to keep digging. You got to keep digging. I know I was here to support you. I taught you everything you knew. The Count of Monte Cristo, has anybody seen the movie? You just got to keep digging. Because the moment you stop digging, you'll be stuck in the tunnel. You'll never make it out. I know it's dirty down there. I know it's dark, and you can't find your way. But, beloved, if you just keep digging... If you just keep praying, if you would prophesy that you are the most amazing person that you really are, if you would begin to just speak good things over yourself, I'm telling you, you're closer, you're closer, you're closer than you've ever been to your breakthrough. So I pray that this message, pandemic perspective, I had to narrow it down because there were so many things, Deacon Keith, that I'm, I'm seeing better now. I'm seeing, I'm gonna use you, cause you, you the type of person, can't nobody, be, can't, nobody, can't nobody be bothered with Deacon Keith. He the coolest cat in church, ever. I realized, Dick, I can't be mad at you. I can't. You're connected to my destiny. I can't. But in a pandemic, it's helped me get by myself and get with God and give God the glory. So I pray that if nothing else, that you will see this as the message that keep you in a place of prayer, that you would prophesy greatness over your life and that you would praise the Lord. The Bible says in Psalm 150, let everything that has breath praise the Lord, whether you feel like it or not. You're not always going to feel like it, beloved. I promise you're not. I don't always feel like it either. But I'm mad now. I'm mad now. So I done got some fire under me. And I'm going forward in the name of the Lord. If you don't know Jesus and you feel like you're listening today or you know somebody who's listening and they feel like, what's the use? Pray for my family, y'all. Because when if you don't know the Lord and somebody dies, it seems hopeless. But we have our hope in God. And if you want that hope in God today, I'm here to tell you that it's available. All you have to do, and it don't even, I can't even tell you what to say. I mean, if you just said, Jesus, save me, he'll save you. If you say, Jesus, I'm broke, he'll fix you. If you say, Jesus, I'm confused, and it ain't got to be nothing special. But if you mean it from your heart, and you understand that Jesus came, died, and rose again, that you could be reconciled to God right here, right this moment, you are saved and a child of God. And after that, the day after that, it's a life learning how to live to please him. And it's, a, it's an incredible journey. So if that's you, I want you to tell somebody, text somebody, I, you know, just let somebody know. Serving God is hard is the best decision I've ever made in my life. It's the best decision, and I'm so glad I'm saved in this pandemic. I'm so grateful because it gives me that hope. It gives you that hope to let you know that everything is going to be all right. Let me close with the word of prayer. Father, I thank you and appreciate you that you're helping us to gain perspective. You've been ministering so much to me, and, and I have like 20 things that you have ministered to me to give me perspective. About 20 things, and I, I couldn't say all of that. I had to bring it down, but I realize now I see. Help us to see that if we would just pray, if we would just prophesy, if we would just give you the praise, we're going to see ourselves right to the other side 
and we're going to come out. You said in your word that you would bring us out to rich fulfillment. Seal this word in our heart. Let that song ring in our spirits as we're leaving here and as we're in the car. Fill us with your joy. Return unto us again the joy of our salvation that people would see and know that there is a God. And you are like none other. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We trust that you are tremendously blessed by today's broadcast. God will give you the perspective. You have the points. You know what to do. So now go and do it in the peace and love of the Lord. God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Be encouraged. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.